dangerous kids reacting to life sentences. I'm very tempted to just say, I'm not going to accept this sentence agreement. We'll go to trial. And if you're convicted of felony murder, you'll go to prison for the rest of your life. That means you'll die there. That's what I'm tempted Damn, to do. Bro. Oh, my. Wait, was that him? At 16, bro. you knew not to keep pounding your fist on that pillow with that little baby's head there. That little little baby? Terrified. I didn't mean to kill Ozzy. Actually, I really didn't. You know, I really think I did that. I didn't mean to hurt him. Bro. There's no way you don't mean to harm someone and especially go to the extent of killing, bro. Like, bro, there's no accident. Chisholm. He is pure evil, and evil can never be rehabilitated. You must imprison yeah. this killer for the rest of his life. A ninth grader who's in court for murdering his 24-year-old school math teacher, Colleen Ritzer, Bro. on October 22nd, 2013. Colleen was known for her dedication to her students, and on that fateful day, she had asked Chisholm to stay after school for additional lessons. Little did she know that her kindness would lead to a horrific end. Chisholm came prepared with a knife, a change of clothes, what? and gloves. He followed her into a restroom where he took her life. His oh brutality didn't God. stop there. He robbed, assaulted, and abused her. Afterward, he disposed of her lifeless body by placing it in a garbage bin and dragging it behind the school. Oh and yeah, there's there's absolutely no emotional like there, there's no there's no excuse for this, bro. I don't care about how young you are. For him to do all of that, bro, that took a working mind, bro. Like he wanted to do that stuff. So that means, yeah, yeah, he deserves any consequences coming his way. In a futile attempt to cover up his crimes, Chisholm went into town and used Richard's credit card to buy a movie ticket. However, he was traced what? down and arrested by the police the next morning. He did all that and trying to use her. Oh, wow. Yo. Yeah, this little. <laughs> This little white ain't got what he's come, got. He still coming, had bro. Colleen's blood on his hands. While the wow. magnitude of Chisholm's crimes is daunting, his courtroom behavior will leave you in disbelief. Philip Chisholm faced multiple charges, including murder, aggravated rape, and armed robbery. Damn. Throughout the court proceedings, Chisholm displayed a shocking lack of remorse, even as the victim's father read his statement. Killer knew exactly what he was doing and has never shown remorse. His demeanor and actions demonstrated a complete disregard for the gravity of his crimes and the yeah, immeasurable crazy, pain he had inflicted on Colleen Ritzer's family. Even in the- f Damn, she was a teacher too, Chad. So that I mean, like, bro, like she has had an obvious impact on a lot of kids throughout her career and stuff. And that's so, that's so messed up, bro. Like, yeah, he deserves life for that. I ain't gonna lie, bro. For all that stuff he did, like this was no accident. This was premeditated. Nah, this, this is bad, bro. And then the fact that he's showing no remorse too, yeah, he deserves what's coming to him. Face of a touching tribute by Colleen's brother. Put this animal behind bars the maximum possible sentence. Do not give this coward the opportunity to shatter another family's lives. Yeah, Chisholm I ain't gonna lie, yeah. cold and unrepentant. His attorneys claimed that he was mentally unstable. That Oh, he's definitely mentally unstable, bro. But that's nobody's fault. And that's not a reason to take somebody's life, bro. Like, I don't care. I don't care about that excuse, chat. I'm sorry, bro. If this happened to any of your family members, you would feel the exact same way. Didn't work. In February 2016, the court will impose the mandatory life sentence for the murder of Colleen Ritzer and set a parole eligibility date of 25 years, the highest level our law allows. However, while Chisholm's reaction could certainly be dismissed as an effect of a mental illness, the same can't be said for the case of 19-year-old Brandon Spencer, Damn. who allegedly started shooting at a crowded Halloween party on the campus what? of the University of Southern California. For what, though, dude? Like, like, what is the reason? I don't have to hear the reasoning because there is no reason to go shooting at no, like, you know what I'm saying? And this is probably over some girl, over, over some, like, friend, beef, street shit, like, just dumb shit, bro. In Los Angeles. Dumb. I'm sorry for having you on your butt. Like in Four individuals were injured in the Bro. shooting, but fortunately, there were no fatalities. All right, he didn't kill anybody, but still, bro, still, just the, just the, just the action of you shooting towards a group of people at all, like that deserves hella jail time, bro. Cause like, you know what I'm saying? If you did kill someone, then it, that's that's another degree. But you got lucky. You got lucky you didn't kill no one, bro. That is you still injure people, and you probably could have injured people to the point where their life is forever changed. Like they like injure something that can't get repaired no more and you completely altered the scale of their life. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
still it, you're still impacting people the trauma that you did when you're shooting at people the trauma they're gonna have for the rest of their life like it's so much effects that you don't really think about chat you are so intent on killing someone that you're willing to shoot them and at the same time open fire into a crowd Fast. following the shooting spencer was detained by the los angeles police department for questioning a couple of days later, he was charged with four counts of attempted murder. The prosecution argued during Man. the trial that the shooting was the result of an ongoing feud between Spencer. What did I tell you guys? What did I tell you guys, bro? Gang feud, bro. Always over to some street shit, some stupid shit. This dude's like 19 years old. This this thing probably happened when he was 18, 17. I don't know how long. This, like Trials take a long time. So this could have happened a long time ago before he was eight, uh, 19 getting sentenced right now. But dude, like... It's so stupid, bro. The streets and all this bullshit. It, it just always, you end up dying or you end up in jail. It's one or the other, bro. It's so dumb. This is just a way to just waste your life, bro. Like, why would you even... I know some people grow up in certain areas and stuff and it's kind of pushed on to them, bro. But if there's any part, you know what I'm saying? Any way you could just get out of something, bro. I recommend to do it, bro. Like, if you're watching my videos and you're in some stupid shit, bro, please. I do not want to see you in jail or, or, or just not on the earth in general, bro. Because it's never worth it. Because the people in the streets, so they, they don't give a shit about you. They'll, they'll, they'll lay you down dead, you know what I'm saying, as soon as anything happens. Or as soon as a, a leverage turns on their side or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the streets are never loyal, bro. An arrival gang member, noting that Spencer himself was a documented and well-known gang member. I'm not a bad person, but I made mistakes. But I'm not just some gang member that you tried to betray me as. Despite the horrifying... You kind of are, bro. You literally did... Like some stupid gang member shit, bro. You literally shot into an open crowd. What, to try to attack one person? Like, do you think you're in COD or something? This is not how life works, my boy. You don't get you don't get chances like that. You don't respond, my nigga. Nature of spend people that you shoot do not respond. His offenses, his actions during the trial managed to shock everyone present. Throughout the trial, Spencer maintained his innocence, but the jury disagreed. Spencer also pleaded his case. The judge sentenced Brandon Spencer to 40 years to life in prison Damn. for four counts of attempted murder. When Spencer heard his sentence, this was his reaction. You see, the thing is, like, I know, like, some people in the comments, are from, they're probably going to be like, oh, damn, like, 40 to life for not even, like, killing someone? That's kind of, you know, wild and kind of uh, kind of too far, which there could definitely be an argument made on that. But at the same time, it's like, chat, like, bro, imagine if it's your family members or something, bro, that got into that incident. They got hurt from him shooting just because of some gang shit. You're going to want to you're going to want to put him away for life, bro. You don't want people like that on the streets. You just don't want it, chat. You know what I'm saying? So the judge kind of has to make an example sometimes, man. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it might be a little excessive, the, the sentencing, but he's probably not even going to end up serving. Uh, they usually sentence and then there's usually like parole or, or some time for bail or something, but... Still, like, you need to set an example. We can't have people roaming the streets like this, bro. That's just willing to go shoot at a whole bunch of people. It doesn't matter if he didn't kill somebody. He could have. And that's the point. That's the dangers of having people like this out there. However, while Spencer's behavior raised eyebrows, it's nothing compared to the explosive actions of 15-year-old Conrad Schaefer during their oh, trial. God. This was a 15-year-old who 15? was out with semi-automatic rifle shooting up. Schaefer shocked Osceola County when he and his friends Bro. began randomly shooting at the residence, resulting in the tragic death of 17-year-old David Guerrero, who was oh, on his way to work. God. Before the shootings, Schaefer had persuaded his father to purchase a 45 caliber high point carbine and 100 rounds of ammunition. He allegedly took the gun from his house while his father was asleep, marking the beginning of the neighborhood's nightmare. Conrad Schaefer and three- Bro, chat. Someone's got to point it out, bro. I'm sorry, but these white kids and their parents, you know what I'm saying? They be the main gun advocates. Like, oh, we can't, don't take our guns away and stuff. And then they be the main ones fucking, you know, making it super easy to access for their damn stupid ass kids to go and shoot up other kids, bro. Like a 15 year old shooting a 17 year old. Like, God damn, bro. 17 year old, he had at least, what, 50, 60 years of life at least? Like at, at an average, you know what I'm saying? And just imagine just getting that taken away from some stupid ass freaking 15 year old, bro. Three of his God. friends, David Damas, Victoria Rios and Juan Muriel terrorized the community for two weeks. They even invaded 22-year-old Eric Rupnarin's home and fatally shot him. Bro. During his trial, Schaefer had this to say to the families of the victims. 15 at a time, I'm really sorry for the things I've done. 
and I know I did wrong, and I know my apologies don't mean nothing to you. Yeah, they I know don't. You can change how you feel about me. Families of Eric Rupnarin also seem to agree. Eric was my grandson. He was my helper to me and my wife. At this time, my family and I had no intention to forgive the guilty because of such a heinous and brutal crime that was done to my grandson, Eric Krupnerine. Schaefer eventually pleaded guilty to two counts of first-degree murder with over 22 incidents of gunfire damaging homes and vehicles. He was- 22 incidents? Bro, Jesus Christ, he's only a 15! sentenced to two consecutive life sentences, with the judge stating that if Schaefer had been just three years older, he would have received the death penalty. What? He would have seen the death penalty? Damn, that's crazy. Your age literally saved you, my boy, but you're still stupid. However, Conrad Schaefer isn't alone in their courtroom actions. Let's not forget the infamous incident involving 15-year-old Martise Fuller, who's facing charges. You see, chat, I just wanted to wrap up on, on this, this point right here. Cause there's, you know, there, especially on Twitter nowadays, whatever, it's just a, it's a lot of like racism going around and a lot of stereotypes, uh, stereotypic comments that are being made, especially towards black people and like, you know, being gang members and having all kinds of violence and stuff. And then you literally see kids like this, bro. And I'm not trying to attack a certain race because that's not who I am. I don't like that. But I also don't like when people coming at my race, like, like we're just like the absolute worst people in the world. When we got dudes like this, 15 year old taking people's lives and shit, you know, with semi-automatic having a whole gang just, you know, robbing people and all that shit. It's like, bro, like, gang life is every everybody that's just gang, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, dude, like, these people, these types of people be doing the worst types of murders, bro. Mass murders. Shooting on schools and stuff, bro. But but we're, we're categorized as, you know what I'm saying? Fire damaging homes and vehicles. He was sentenced to two consecutive life sentences, with the judge stating that if Schaefer had been just three years older, he would have received the death penalty. However, Conrad Schaefer isn't alone in their courtroom actions. Let's not forget the infamous incident involving 15-year-old Martise Fuller, who's facing charges including murder in Kenosha I think County, I've seen Wisconsin. This guy I stopped in my doorway and I looked at him and I said, oh my God, Martise. I said, please, you don't have to do this. And he looked at me and he said, yes, I do. Fuller what? broke into his ex-girlfriend's house with a handgun and fatally oh shot his ex-girlfriend in her bedroom while she was listening to music. Her mother, who rushed to the scene upon hearing the gunshots, confronted the assailant and was shot twice, but survived. During the trial, he showed little emotion. Fuller pleaded not guilty, but the jury ultimately found him guilty on three counts. Wait, did, wait, wait, did they say he pleaded not guilty? Are you, are you and was shot twice, but survived. During the trial, he she survived? Oh my God, thank God, bro. He showed little emotion. Fuller pleaded not guilty, but the jury ultimately found him guilty wow. on three counts. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of first-degree intentional homicide. At his sentencing, Fuller, perhaps for the first time in the You're courtroom, crying? displayed some emotion. What the fuck are you crying for, dude? You literally shot someone. Over what? Some fucking, some whiny, whiny feelings, bro? Like, you think your feelings are, are, are worth you know, taking someone's life just because of how you feel? It's probably over some dumb shit too, like, bro. Oh my God, I don't get people like this, bro. Like, motion. However, he continued to assert his no innocence and delivered a statement through his attorney, expressing his apologies to the family. Mr. Fuller's prepared a statement that he asked that I read on his behalf. Nobody Martise cares. Writes, Wholeheartedly, I wanted to write this, giving my sincerest apologies to this family. I once shared time and love with. Truthfully, I am sorry about the pain you've all suffered through this, but more importantly, the loss of my ex-girlfriend Kaylee that I loved too. So I am sorry. Despite the hatred that is against me, I still am sorry. But I have to continue to stand innocent because I am. And I know that I- You're in- You're- How are you innocent if you literally shot? What are you talking about here? If barely showed emotion throughout my time but in all honesty it is because it's hard to have tears left to cry knowing my mom lost a son one of her children too but i am sorry and i hope you all can eventually see in your hearts and vision that i am not the person the media has made me out to be the judge however you're not the person that literally shot somebody you're not and there was literally an eyewitness from what I heard, you know, the lady saying that he said, like, I have to do this or whatever. Like, dude, like, what is going on?
Can someone explain this in the comments, like, what his stance was in court, if you actually know about this case? Like, why he didn't want to plead guilty? Like, what's going Butter on? Wasn't convinced that Fuller could do better in the future. You are a very dangerous and a damaged human being. So in the interest of protecting the public, acknowledging the seriousness of these acts, the court orders that on count one, you are sentenced to life in prison without eligibility for extended supervision. Despite the gravity of his sentence, Fuller appeared largely unaffected. However, as we saw Fuller's unconcern with his sentence, it brings to mind the strikingly similar response of Jennifer Mee. When I walked up, I was to the corner. I heard the first gun shot after the first gun shot. I ran. At 15, Jennifer Mee became popular as the hiccup girl due to her sudden bout of uncontrollable hiccups. She even appeared on shows and events. Eventually, she was cured and her popularity ended. But Jennifer wasn't satisfied. She needed the fame. So she and her boyfriend, Lamont Newton, and another friend, Lauren Rayford, set up a robbery with victims she had met online. Oh the trio God. lured a 22-year-old man to a vacant home where they robbed and fatally shot him, taking $50 as the reward. As if- Nah, Chad, this is like, this is like, uh, the biggest reason why not to meet up with strangers and shit, bro. Especially even just girls and stuff, Chad, if, especially as guys. Cause bro, you never know if they're trying to, you know, set you up and shit, bro. This shit, the world is crazy now, bro. If Jennifer's offenses weren't enough. I mean, it's always been crazy, but you just, especially nowadays with social media, how easy it is to contact people and stuff like, and how, how easy it is to fool people into doing things, chat. You know what I'm saying? Never, never just meet up with no strangers, bro. Her demeanor in court especially by yourself. dumbfounded. At 19 years old, she was arrested on charges of first degree murder. During her trial, this recorded call she made to her mother while in detention was played for the jury. Hello. Hi, Mama. Hello, Jennifer. What's going on? I'm in jail. Why are you in jail? From, um, first degree murder in the first degree. Who did you kill? I didn't kill nobody. It, it all went wrong, Mama. Who are you trying to kill, Jennifer? Jennifer was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Damn. Jennifer's co-defendants, Rayford and Newton, were also sentenced to life imprisonment for their roles in the murder. However, when emotions run high in court, the actions of Jennifer Mee and Alyssa Bustamante leave us questioning sanity itself. Was her throat wow. cut? And Alyssa said yes. And that's when grandmother, uh, the grandmother broke down and began crying. Alyssa Bustamante was a troubled 15-year-old girl who lived with her grandparents and siblings in St. Martins, Missouri. On October 21st, 2009, Bustamante lured her nine-year-old neighbor, Elizabeth Olton, into the woods behind her house. She what? strangled, stabbed, and slit the throat of the innocent girl, then buried oh her my in a dug God. grave. I just wonder what it would be like just to kill someone see the life just drain out of someone i wonder she then went to a church dance as if nothing had happened if you thought bustamante's crimes were reprehensible brace yourself no nah, that's just that's just that's devilish chat i ain't gonna lie that's just straight devil right there like I, I don't even know what to i don't even know what to think about that i don't even know what to feel about that because i don't even think this girl right here she looks like she just pre-dug grave I but just, just look at her face like not this girl someone. Alyssa's friend? What? See the life just drain out of someone, I wonder. She then went to a church. Is that, is the, is the friend girl like mimicking her or is she actually just saying that herself? I'm confused on that, but look at this girl, bro. She just, she just looks like she's up to no good, bro. She like, she looks soulless. She looks like she doesn't have any type of life inside her. Church dance you know? as if nothing. Like, bro, oh my God. It happened. If you thought Bustamante's crimes were reprehensible, brace yourself for her shocking conduct during the proceedings. The police found Olton's body two days later after Bustamante confessed wow. to the murder. She was arrested and charged with first degree murder and armed criminal action. Yeah, she, she gotta be guilty to a reduced charge of second degree murder in exchange for avoiding a trial and a possible life sentence without parole. At her sentencing hearing, Bustamante apologized to Olson's family and said she regretted her actions. However, the judge was not moved by her remorse. Yeah, she does not look serious. Life in prison with the possibility of parole after 35 years. She will be eligible for release in 2054 when she will be 60 years old. However, let's compare the jaw-dropping reaction of Bustamante to the astonishing behavior of 19-year-old Nicholas Cruz. Wait, where was her reaction? Did she even react? I didn't, I didn't see no reaction. Cruz, 
My name is Nick, and I'm gonna be the next school shooter of 2018. Oh my god, dude. This guy. Oh my god, I remember this chat. No. Nah. My name is Nick, and I'm gonna be the next school shooter of 2018. My goal is at least 20 people with an AR-15 and a couple trace rounds. A gunman who carried out the- Wow, bro. Wow. You see what I say, chat? Just remember what I said before. Lolly, die. These are the type of people doing this, bro. Deadliest All high school shooting in U.S. history. Crews killed 17 people and wounded 17 others at Marjorie. And I blame it on the parents too, chat. Even though he's a grown, he's a grown people in a, you know what I'm saying? Not grown, but usually like teenagers, of course. But their parents, they influence them to be like this, bro. Like they're aggressive, you know, uh, discriminatory. And just aggressive, like I already said, aggressive. And, um, you know, I'm trying to find the right word for it. But basically, you know what I'm saying? They didn't raise them with the right the right values and the right morals and stuff. And this is what happens, bro. This is the type of people they turn into. Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida on February 14th, 2018. Oh my God! Oh my God! He used a semi-automatic rifle bro. that he had legally purchased a year earlier. I came out and asked him. What are you going to do with the rifle? And the reply was, I go shooting with my friends on the weekends. I just want my own stuff. Despite the horrifying nature of Cruz's effect. Like, how the hell, bro, there should be no way. Wait, was he a teenager, though? Like, I, I forgot what age he was when he got the gun or whatever. But especially if he was a teenager, like, there's no way he should be able to get a gun, bro. Like, I don't think nobody should be able to even buy guns until they're, like, 21, bro. If you can't drink and stuff until 21... Why the hell can you have a gun before it? You know what I'm saying? His actions during sentencing managed to shock everyone present. Cruz was arrested and charged with 17 counts of premeditated first degree murder. Jesus Christ. And 17 counts of attempted first degree murder. He pleaded guilty to all the charges, admitting his responsibility for the massacre. What's going on today, bro? The, the, the demons, man. Demons? The voices. demons? Voices and demons. Where's the voices? Where the f am I? Holy sh uh, now he's trying to act like he's crazy and shit, bro. Nah, fuck you, nigga. For real, like, oh my god, this nigga pissing me off, bro. What happened? Shut up. The jury could not read. For real, bro. Like, bro, bro, if I was an officer, bro, it would be so hard for me not to just start socking this nigga until he's out, bro. Like, dead ass, like, my composure would be at an all-time low. To unanimous verdict on whether to recommend the death penalty for Cruz. Like, bro, this is innocent kids in school, bro. Like, oh my god. Bro. As a result, he was automatically sentenced to life in prison without the possibility. He needs to be sent to double life. As a matter of fact, honestly, somebody like this deserves a death penalty, chat. I'm just out to say it. Somebody like this that, that goes and just opens fires at a school and stuff. Like, to me, that's, that's a death sentence, bro. Hell no. ...of parole for each of the 17 murders, as required by Florida law. He was also sentenced to an additional 34 life sentences for the attempted murders. Thank you. At his Put him away. Cruz attempted an apology. I am very sorry for what I did. Shut the I fuck up, with it every day. Shut and up. If I were to get a second chance, I would do everything in my power to try to help others. And shut the hell up. I don't give a shit what you got to say, money. Like, dead ass. Please shut up. Like, you're just pissing me off. Every time I hear his voice, it just pisses me off. I am doing this for you, and I do not care if you do not believe me. And I love you, and I know you don't believe me. But I have to live with this every day. Cruz showed no remorse or empathy for his actions, and instead wore a red prison jumpsuit, glasses, and a mask. He even laughed at one point during the proceedings. Cruz's lack of... What the f... What are you laughing about? And who is this bitch laughing to? Mask. He even laughed... What is this bitch laughing about? Like, the fact that anybody can even defend a person like this, the fact that he's even... Oh, my God, bro. Like, that shit, that shit pisses me off. That, that's why I can never be a lawyer, chat. Because I'm pretty sure they have to take just whatever they can get or whatever. And, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, people are legally allowed to have lawyers and representation, like, no matter how wrong they are. No matter how wrong they are. And I just, I couldn't do that, bro. I morally couldn't do that. That, that would literally kill, kill me inside. Like, I'll literally be looking at my... My, uh, the, the person I'm working for, like, dude, like, hell no. I, I can't defend this, bro. I can't. At one point during the proceedings, Cruz's lack of emotion and his escape from the death penalty outraged and disappointed many of the victim's relatives who had hoped for a different outcome. However, while it was clear that Cruz didn't care about the years he was going to spend in jail, his behavior in court was very different to that of 19-year-old Keandra Cook. 
a high school student who used a dating app to set up a robbery scheme with her boyfriend, Bro. Kendrick Bass. Cook lured Perry Nida, a Palm Coast man, to a secluded spot in South Daytona, where Bass and others attacked him and his friend, Emmanuel Purcell, who had accompanied him. Cat, what I tell you about strangers, bro? On the apps and shit, bro, don't do it. Bass shot Purcell in the chest, but luckily he survived. However, what Cook did in the courtroom was even crazier. Cook was arrested and charged with principal to carjacking with a deadly weapon and principal to aggravated battery with a deadly weapon. Guilty of all three charges, sentence you to 20 years in state prison. <laughs> Cook was later allowed to withdraw her plea and cooperate with the state to testify against Bass, who was also charged. They're crying, you know what I'm saying? Parents and, and the family's crying and shit, but you gotta raise your kids better, man. Like. ...with attempted murder. She entered a new plea deal and received a reduced sentence of 11 years in prison and 20 years of probation. I think he got good in here and I think he got potential. Don't lose sight of that. She apologized to the victims and their families. However, this wasn't the only time a convict freaked out during their sentencing. No. Take, for example, the case of 18-year-old Donta Wright, a teenager who was involved in the murder of Jordan Klee, a high school student and athlete in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Wright Jesus and two Christ. other youths planned to rob Klee of his drugs, clothes, and shoes, but Klee fought back. Wright then shot him in the back of the head, killing oh, him instantly. God, Just when bro. he thought Wright couldn't sink any lower, his behavior in the courtroom will leave you stunned. Wright was arrested and charged with felony murder, armed robbery, conspiracy to commit armed robbery, fucking idiot, bro, and felony firearm possession. The family of the victim read a very emotional victim impact statement. But this is how serious Wright felt about their pain. Sincerely hope that whatever it was you wanted so badly that you felt the need to murder my son was worth the next at least 52 years of your continued existence. You won't get the luxury of raising your child. Bro, and he's all smiling and shit right now, bro. Oh my god, chat. I couldn't bro, I couldn't be like a I could I couldn't be like this, bro. I would not be able to control myself. If I was like one of these ladies, like a mom or something, bro, I would literally choke his ass out, bro. Like, there, there would be so many things going on in my head right now, bro. Like, I would not be able to control myself. Especially if I'm acting like this, bro. Like, he fucking rubbing his hands together like a dumbass thing. Oh, my God. Bro. Uh, because you took mine away. When he was called to address the court, Wright shocked everyone. I'm going to tell y'all, I'll be home soon or I'll be Keon. I love my family. That's all Bro, I hope he's still in jail right now. I, I hope he's in the bottom of the jail. I hope he gets... Dead penalty. I, I don't know, bro. Like, like people like this don't deserve to be out in, in the world at all. At all. At all, bro. I'm sorry. They need to be in jail for the rest of their life. There's just some people, they just don't deserve to walk the earth, bro. He's one of them. You got to say. Right, like, he, he's not taking this shit serious, bro. This shit pissed me off. No remorse or empathy for his actions. His attitude in court shocked and angered the judge and the victims. And it's crazy because I know, like, you know what I'm saying? Somebody did this to him and his family. He's going, you know, try to slide for them and do all this game shit for them, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? But he's over here like acting like him taking somebody's life when he literally tried to rob him and they, you know what I'm saying? He tried to rob somebody, they fought back, and then he killed him. And it's like, what? Like, you think you're cool for that, bro? No, you a whole bitch, nigga. You a whole bitch. That ass. Family. The judge reserved some choice words for him. I'm very tempted to just say, I'm not going to accept this sentence agreement. We'll go to trial. And if you're convicted of felony murder, you'll go to prison for the rest of your life. That means you'll die there. That's what I'm tempted to do. Wright was eventually sentenced to 25 to 52 years in prison for his role in the murder. He told me to hit her. I didn't want to, but I didn't want him hitting me, so I hit her. It's nothing compared to the explosive actions of 13-year-old Antonio Barbo and 14-year-old Nathan Pop during their trial. She said that she's going to have to call Antonio's mom, and Antonio kept looking at me, and then he hit her in the head. In September 2012, Antonio and Nathan conspired to and brutally murdered Antonio's great grandmother, 76 year old Barbara Olson. Bro, the kids bludgeoned her to death bro. using a hammer and a hatchet, then stole her purse. What's even more chilling is that after committing this heinous crime, they used part of the stolen money to buy marijuana and pizza. Oh my god. 
Yo, yo, it's it's like it keeps getting worse and worse. Like, what's going on with these kids nowadays, bro? Like, are they really this restarted? Like, what's going on, bro? We were gonna try to scare her to get money and then use force if needed. When you say use force use if force. needed, was there a discussion about what type of force you might use? Um, an attack, uh, I guess to kill. During the legal proceedings. Yo, <laughs> bro, this is like pissing me off, bro. These kids are all pissing me off right now. Especially the last one and this one right now. But like, what are you talking about? Uh, I guess, uh, to kill, uh. Like, he's saying it like it was just, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's describing a basketball or a football player right now. Like, oh, yeah, we, just, we were just going to run around, catch the ball, you know what I'm saying? You know, if we had to pass it to... Like, what are you talking about right now? Meetings, Antonio Barbo changed his plea from not guilty by reason of mental illness or defect to no contest. No, he's not mentally ill at all. The prosecution. However, he was very remorseful. I know I don't show my emotions much. And I myself, I'm not sure why. But that doesn't mean I don't... Nathan Pop also had some things to let off his chest. I just want to say that I'm truly sorry for everything that happened. Bro, y'all just killed an old lady, his plea bro. And expressions of remorse, he and Nathan were sentenced to life imprisonment. Yeah, y'all gotta be put away. As they left the court. Now, if y'all had the guts to just kill an old lady like that, if y'all even have it in your heart to do that, <laughs> you don't belong in the real world, man. Because what are you gonna do to a regular, you know what I'm saying, a regular guy or a regular girl, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're willing to do that to an old ass elderly lady. Like, what are you going to do to just normal people? You can't be out in this world like that, bro. I'm sorry. However, just when you thought you'd seen it all, another convict surpasses Antonio and Nathan's wild courtroom display. Um, as I approached, I got closer. I saw her really sniffing at a particular area. So I pulled her back, and when I looked, kind of second-guessed myself. You know, I thought I saw a dead body, but I wasn't too sure because, uh, you know, it was missing some limbs. Enter 18-year-old Matthew Borges was facing a murder charge for the beheading of 16-year-old Lee Valoria Paulino in December 2016. Oh my Borges God. and Paulino were students at Lawrence High School and had reportedly smoked marijuana together in November 2016, which was the last time Paulino was seen alive. Paulino's body was discovered by a dog walker near the Merrimack River two weeks after he went missing. The details of the scene were chilling. Listen as the dog walker explained what he saw. Um, as I approached, I got closer. I saw her really sniffing at a particular area. So Bro. I pulled her back, and when I looked, kind of second-guessed myself. You know, I thought I saw a dead body, but I wasn't too sure because, uh, you know, it was missing some limbs. At first, Borges was not considered a suspect, but the tide of evidence began pointing unmistakably in his direction. During the trial, the prosecutor, Jay Gabito, argued that there was an overwhelming amount of evidence incriminating Borges. The allegations against Borges were disturbing. It was suggested that he had stabbed Paulino multiple times before decapitating him. When the verdict was delivered, Borges displayed an eerie lack of emotion. It, that the defendant, Matthew Borges, is guilty on the charge of first-degree murder. Eventually, he was found guilty of first-degree murder and sentenced to life imprisonment. Yeah, he definitely did. the possibility did. of parole only after serving 30 years. However shocking Borges' reaction to his sentence was, how does it compare to the reaction of 16-year-old Dylan Schumacher, who was in Buffalo, New York courthouse? I am a 16-year-old blonde. Probably all I have to do is cry in front of the jury, and they're going to feel sorry for me. What? Charges of second-degree murder. In March 2013, Schumacher was babysitting his 18-year-old girlfriend's child while she went to work. He was inside a Springville home shared with his parents. Bro, don't tell me this on the baby, evening, dude. Schumacher beat the 23-month-old oh Austin god. to death. Oh my god! Yo, first of all, I ain't gonna lie. The girlfriend, whatever, is just stupid as fuck for just leaving her kid. But at the same time, she's 18 year old, so. She had that kid probably when she was like 17, so she's already just dumb in general. Not dumb, not that she's dumb, but she just does no life like that, you know, to make uh, judgment decisions like this. But, dude, Jesus Christ, wow. No, nah, he deserves to be put away for life, Jesus. Following this horrifying it's getting worse, incident, bro. Schumacher was arrested and charged with the murder of the toddler, along with child abuse charges. Schumacher claimed he didn't intend to harm the child or cause his death, How stating not? that he was trying to get the child to stop crying. At 16, what? you knew not to keep pounding your fist on that pillow with that little baby's head there. Bro. That little boy had to be terrified. Probably he had a hard time breathing. 
and then you repeatedly punched him so hard as to cause his death wow. the brain. The fact that you even have the, the guts to just start punching out a baby, like, dude, you have no heart, no soul, no nothing, bro. Like, what is actually wrong with you? Like, you have to be put behind bars, bro. You're willing to do that to a baby? Like, yeah, you're, you're a danger to society, like, in general. He needs to never come out of jail in his life. If you thought Schumacher would be remorseful for his crimes, you're wrong. As Schumacher entered the courtroom for his sentencing, he couldn't even get settled behind the defense table before breaking into tears. That's right, Schumacher expressed how sorry he was for his actions. I take back what was done. I wish I could. I would give my life for Austin. However, you will in prison. It was all an act, and the judge wasn't fooled. The judge pointed out a recorded phone call between Schumacher and his mother. The record will show that you admitted oh my God. On that on July 23rd, 2013, in a phone call to your mother from the holding center, you stated, and I got a quote from the court reporter, I am a 16-year-old blonde. Probably all I have to do is cry in front of the jury, and they're going to feel sorry for me. Despite wow. his second attempt at an apology, Schumacher was handed the maximum punishment of 25 years to life in prison. However, this sentence was later modified to 18 years to life. However, while some may attribute Schumacher's reaction to juvenile delinquency, it... this is 18-year-old Shondell Jackson. Uh, something must have been cut out right there. <laughs> Who's facing charges God, of murder in the Milwaukee County Courthouse. Jackson and his friend were out to rob when they crossed paths with 21-year-old Nathan Potter, a University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee college student, heading to his apartment. The friends approached Potter, demanding money, but Potter was only a student and had no money. When Jackson realized Potter had no cash to offer, he shot him, killing wow, him. Bro. After the murder, Jackson fled to Mississippi, but was ultimately... It's crazy, like... People are so desperate to try, try to rob somebody instead of fucking getting a job. Like a lazy little bitch. Like, dude, go get a goddamn job, bro. Like, what do you think robbing people is going to do for you, bro? You'll probably hit a lick once or twice. You're going to run into the wrong person. They're going to kill you. Or you're going to end up killing somebody. And then you're going to go to jail for the rest of your life. And then, what, in this, this clip, you're over here crying like a little bitch. Like, shut up, bro. You're arrested. Like, all because you don't want to go get uncle. your own money. We have enough time to think about a whole lot of things now. Because you just can't take nobody to life. You know, that, that's just wrong. As if killing someone at 18 was not outrageous enough, Jackson's actions in court were even more dramatic. During his trial, Jackson's actions in the courtroom drew attention. Here, Jackson is gesturing towards the victim's family, totally unremorseful about his Bro. actions. Jackson was quickly escorted out of the courtroom, but oh, as he was no. leaving, Jackson flashed a disturbing smile toward the grieving family. Now, at his sentencing, Jackson's mother had a... Nah, bro. See, like... <laughs> oh, my God, bro. I'm pretty good at, at holding my composure and shit, chat, but I don't know. This type of situation, this, this stupid-ass nigga, bro, like, I would literally... I, we would have to scrap, bro. I don't know. I'm gonna have to go to jail for a few days, so I'm like... There's no way. There's no way he's getting away with that without something happening to him. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm just a crash out chat. An opportunity to address the court. When I saw it on the news, I, I even cried. I'm like, oh my God, I can't imagine what that mother is going through. I never had a clue that my child had anything to do with it. My son is not a monster. He yes, he is. Yes, he is. He is a monster. If you are robbing somebody, first of all, that's already bad enough. And then you decide to take their life just because they didn't have what you wanted. You are a goddamn monster. I don't give a fuck what this bitch saying, bro. He, he is not a monster. When Jackson was given the opportunity to speak, Jackson surprised everyone. I apologize for my behaviors. Please don't take my life from me. That's right. In a last ditch attempt to save himself, Jackson pleaded for leniency and offered an apology for his actions. Now it is time for the judge to deliver his sentence. The need to protect the community, which I also fear for with Mr. Jackson, and I am going to sentence uh, Mr. Jackson to life imprisonment without possibility for extended supervision. I know that that is something that is reserved for the most serious of cases, and I... Jackson was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. But when Jackson heard get, that he would be spending the rest of his life in prison, he couldn't contain his emotions. Oh, 
Damn, bro. Deputies had to intervene, restraining Jackson as his anger flared. Watch again as Jackson pushed this cop over. Damn. Fortunately, this cop was able to wrestle him to the ground, while this officer here unbuckled his pepper spray and put it to work. Amidst the chaos, a member of Jackson's family has a shocking remark for the Potter family. Eventually, Jackson was led out of- You talking about I hate y'all? What the fuck are you talking about you hate y'all? Hate your son. Your son did this to himself, you idiot. What the f Oh my God, bro. Like, I get it. Emotions are flaring, bro. You know what I'm saying? Family and everything. Like, I get the emotional part of it, bro. But for you to take it out on somebody else's family when they, they were innocent, bro, they're, they they lost somebody. They actually lost somebody. They're never even going to be able to speak to him. You're going to actually be able to speak to your son through a prison phone. You actually hear his voice. They won't. They fucking won't. You know what I'm saying? He's gone. All because of this dumbass nigga, bro. The court to spend the rest of his life behind Be mad bars. At him. But Nathan Potter's parents had a few things to say. Our little girl was afraid. She was afraid that he was going to try and kill one of us. I hope it is he spends the rest of his life in jail. Jackson's friend and accomplice pleaded guilty to acting as the lookout in the crime and received a 12-year sentence. Despite the terrible behavior of Shondell's family in court, the uncle who tipped off the police maintained his stance despite threats. However, this wasn't the only time a convicted kid freaked out during his sentencing. Your son is the victim and the killer is your granddaughter. Can you talk about that? Mm. Wow. She's not my granddaughter. Take, for example, the case of 16-year-old Sierra Halseth and 18-year-old Aaron Guerrero. Where did the evil come that was bred into a soul that murders their own father? Who are facing multiple what? charges, including murder with a deadly weapon, arson, robbery with a deadly weapon, conspiracy to conduct robbery, and multiple counts of fraudulent use of credit or debit cards at the Regional Justice Center in Las Vegas. The teenage couple murdered Sierra's father, 45-year-old Daniel Halseth. They stabbed him over 60 times and attempted to burn his body and house. Then, they took his debit card and fled to Salt Lake City, indulged themselves, and opened a YouTube channel where they callously shared information like this. Day three <laughs> after murdering somebody. Whoa! Don't put that on the camera. The teenage... Bro, I swear. I swear. Like, kids are so fucking retarded. That's these, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say, but... They, they like, like, what is this, bro? Like, this is like a representation of how kids are, especially with the social media nowadays, bro. Like, they just think everything's cool. They just want views and shit. It's just, it's horrible. Teenagers dated in 2020, but their parents did not approve of the relationship, forcing them to end it. On April 9th, 2021, Daniel's lifeless body was discovered in the garage of his Las Vegas home. The teenagers were subsequently apprehended in Salt Lake City. Throughout the court proceedings, the behavior of Sierra was starkly different from that of Aaron. Aaron Guerrero seems to be emotionally breaking down. When he was allowed to speak, he had this to say. I ask for forgiveness and I get, as I get sentenced today, and I hope it brings you a little peace. Meanwhile, Sierra Halseth appeared disinterested, bored, and detached from the gravity of the situation. She claimed that her father had physically and sexually abused her. He locks me in place and starts pushing me and hitting me around. Eventually, they were both found guilty by district judge. See, that's, 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 definitely, that's definitely a possibility, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, you know, you got to seek help for that in other ways. You can't be taking people's life, but you know what I'm saying? I can get why she's not, you know, super emotional about this, though. It's not an excuse to take somebody's life at all. You know, I, I'd rather her, you know, go seek help from, you know, authorities, from different sources, uh, family members, whatever. But yeah, man. So uh, now, now that with that context, it's like, damn, bro. I thought the, the dad was really doing that, dude. Like, you know, he's not innocent from anything, too. So, ah, that's tough. What do you guys think? Judge Chiara Jones. 55 days credit for time served. That is a total aggregate sentence of life in the Nevada Department of Corrections with the possibility of parole after 22 years of good service. And ordered to pay $5,000 in restitution. For Sierra's grandmother, a lot has changed. You're in a tough spot because your son is the victim and the killer is your granddaughter. Can you talk about that? Mm. If you thought these reactions were shocking, you'd be amazed at this video. 
the top five biggest judge explosions of all time. That's crazy, dude. Yo, this is a good video. If you guys want me to react to more things like this, make sure you guys comment down below. I'm trying to mix up the reactions on the channel, so I hope you guys enjoy these type of videos. And let me know other videos you guys want me to react to. Hop in my Discord, let me know there. Or just comment um, in the comments. I always look at the comments every day. So, love you guys. Hope you guys are having a great day, great night, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.